Hello, world. This is the Gadget Flow podcast, the show about everything related to products, entrepreneurship, marketing, and crowdfunding. This week, I got to chat with Giles Daw, and he is an entrepreneur, a business owner, and an incredibly talented fine artist. We had a great conversation about transitioning from art into the business world and how to make your crowdfunding campaign stand out and be super successful. So without further ado, here is my interview with Giles Daw. Okay, I am here with Mr. Giles Daw. Giles, how are you doing, man? Great. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. We're we're really excited to have you on the Gadget Flow podcast this week. Um, and in researching you uh, in order to do this interview, I discovered that you're not just an entrepreneur, but you're also a fine artist. And so <laughs> if you don't mind, would you mind if I asked you a few questions about that to start sure. the interview? Yeah, sure. My, my background is quite wide and varied and hopefully it's quite interesting to the listeners. Yeah, I was, I was pretty fascinated because when I, when I was looking you up and researching you, I stumbled across, um, you know, I, I think it's just gilesdaw.com. Right. Um, and it was like all this beautiful artwork and, and paintings. And I was a little bit confused because I was like, is this the right person? <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then when I looked deeper and I like saw your LinkedIn profile and all that stuff, I realized like, oh yeah, he just does it all. So, yeah. Yeah. um, mm-hmm. So just to just for a little bit of backstory, how how long have you been painting? Uh, I've been painting for years. I've been painting since I was um, sixteen, you know, at school, and I took it further and did a degree. And I actually did my uh, fine art degree in France. Um, so yeah, that's that's a bit different. And um, yeah, I, I I just took it forward. Really, I, I went over to Hong Kong. Um, I can talk about the web, my web background, but yeah, I went over to Hong Kong and, and I was doing web, um, sorry, full-time uh, painting there and did some artwork for a guy called Wo Kai Wai, which is uh, like a famous award-winning Hong Kong film director. And he's put some of, or well, he said he put some of my paintings in his film, one of his recent films, but you know, that was a long time ago. I'm not sure where or you could catch a glimpse of it somewhere. But, yeah, my, my work is quite surreal, I guess. And, um, yeah, I was doing that for a while. It was a full-time job. That's very interesting, man. Um, yeah. but, I, but I think it's cool to talk about because I know, yeah. like, me, I have a background in, in the arts as well and kind of crossed over into the entrepreneurial business world. And I know that somehow, even, the, even though the two feel different, they're actually really, really similar. In a lot of ways and yeah they actually are really intertwined so yeah, yeah. Sp- speak on that no i can i can use the skills and the creativity and um and place it into you know crowdfunding um you know you're trying to market yourself and promote yourself and you're t- thinking of vis- visuals things and people check on their phones and they want to see things straight away so i look at that sort of aspect as well so yeah all this all my background can be used uh in the current work that i'm doing so yeah this it's all good yeah. So before we get to exactly what you're doing now, like tell me, tell me about like the transition. So you were doing art full time, you said, and then now yeah. now you're running your own business. What? Yeah. Tell me about that journey a little bit. Uh, well, the journey started after I finished my art degree because I realized it was so hard that to get a, a job doing painting. You know, you have to be really famous and or, or dead actually to, to, to sell your artwork so <laughs> i didn't fancy right. that option so i you know it was around 1999 <laughs> that around, around that time that you uh, the, the web was was you know taking off and i thought this is quite interesting and i learned it within a couple of months and i ended up working for um a local newspaper which is connected to daily mail group you know it's it's, it's quite a big publishing group daily mail and I worked there for a while and mm-hmm. did their websites and then went, up, went on to do um, websites for government uh, uh, within, within England. And that went quite well, but I felt at that time a, a, a nagging urge to just do more. They weren't as fast as, as what I'd like them to do. And they were saying, it doesn't matter about how much we're spending. Let's keep on going. I wasn't, I wasn't interested in that. And I, ended, I thought, let's, let's just do something different. And I ended up going to Hong Kong. And uh, creating my own websites because at the time I think, why am I doing work for others, making sites for them? And then yeah, this I was actually doing my own sort of full-time work 
um, with websites and painting, and it was great. It, it went really well. And uh, after that, I transitioned from, you know, Hong Kong is one of the most expensive places to live. I, I lived there for six years, and uh, I ended up going to China instead. It, it was better because I had family as well at the time. It was better for my son to go to uh, full-time education over there. And, uh, yeah, China, mm. China was an amazing experience, and uh, I was there for seven years. And now I'm literally back into England now, uh, back to where I came from uh, after all this travel. And, uh, yeah, it's good. But how, how I, it developed and how, you know, how I found crowdfunding and things like that was I had a gifts website. And I actually did some work for, for Evan from the Gadget Flow, and he found me. And I actually did a couple of months' work on, on uh, Gadget Flow. And uh, with my gift site, actually, uh, I found that people contacted me about Kickstarter campaigns. I didn't know much at the time. I was turning them away. I said, you know, you know, I can't help you. I need actual live product, physical product that I can sell on my site. And uh, I was turning them away. And I, I realized that I was getting so many uh, inquiries that um, I could do something with it. And that's how Hyperstarter came about. Right. Man, that's a cool story. That's yeah. uh that's amazing you got to live, you know, in a few different places yeah. and, and see so much of the world that way. Um so okay, you transition into building Hyperstarter. Yeah. So give us the backstory there. Like what about the crowdfunding market and that opportunity did you see that you thought, okay, this is where I need to go, this is what I need to be pursuing? Yeah, well the market itself, if we just focus on Kickstarter, which I think is the biggest um crowdfunding platform, they've got they've got some stats like over 300,000 uh, campaigns, 3.3 uh, billion raised, and about 160 new campaigns a day. So it's, it's you know, it's mm. huge. But what I realized the failure of Kickstarter is, is that only 30% uh, of all campaigns reach their minimum funded goal. And I thought, you know, wow. you know this is it's a, it's a huge number that don't actually reach their goal. What, what can I do to help them? And so I built Hyperstarter, which is is still free to use. So it's a free to use, um, like a web analytics tool where web based. Uh, and so you just run your Kickstarter URL, and it spits out information on how you can improve your page. And why I focused on the mm. campaign page itself is that I felt that um, it's the most important thing out of everything that you're doing because your campaign page is basically your sales page. It's the one that you know you get pledges coming in and all those type, different types of things, and you're promoting yourself. And it's where the trust element comes in as well. So it doesn't matter where you're driving traffic to if you're using Facebook ads and so on. It's, it's basically down to your campaign page, how, how if, if you're putting the right message across and if people can trust you. And that's what I put the focus on, really, in, in the work that I do. And then, yes, yeah, it's just, just taken off from there, really. Yeah, so... Can you just like explain like how it works a little bit? So you just put in your your, your URL for your campaign, and then essentially, yeah. um, Hyperstarter just like scans your page and tells you this, this, and this could be different. And that's just based on like how, how did you build that out? I mean, not to get too technical, but <laughs> is that just kind of how it works? Yeah, it is actually how it works. So it looks at the number of images, it's the amount of text on the page. And it just gives you, it even looks at your social media, and it gives you yeah. advice on on what you should or what you know, it gives you a rating and maybe a hyperstarter rating on there on, on what you should be doing. And what I find is that because it's free to use, anyone can use it. I don't ask for an email address, sign up or anything like that. It you sort of uh, sort of put your foot in the door really, and that people trust you. It's all about trust that I mentioned before, and they say, well, this guy's giving me something for free. What else can he do for me? What else can the, uh, the Hyperstarter team can do? And then, yeah, it's, it's just taken off where then they go to, say, our, our other page where we can list them on our platform or we can do other things, which is the hands-on work, which has got the, the most traction, I think, um, and that benefits the campaign owners more. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So yeah. what are some, like, what are some of the best... Like uh, maybe just practically speaking, mm -hmm. like when you're building out a campaign page, like maybe what what's like a key one of the key elements to having a successful crowdfunding campaign page? Like what what stands out to you is one of those things. It's like a non negotiable. You need this. Um, so that there's there's quite a few elements, but I think it's to actually explain exactly what the you know, say take an actual product. You you've got to explain what that actual product does. 
and the benefits mm. behind it. Because what I like to do is when I'm scrolling down a page, you, you capture someone's attention. It's like when you're speaking to someone or when you're giving a, you know, these 60 second pitches, you capture someone's attention. And as they're scrolling down the page, the campaign page itself, they understand more about what, what you're doing. Oh, I see some nice images of people enjoying using your product. I could imagine myself uh, within that photo as well using this product. And, and they're sort of scrolling down. They say, oh, I see the technical features. I can use it with this and this and this. Oh, I see the specifications. Yet yeah, I can do that. Oh, I see the timeline when we're going to receive this sort of thing. And it goes on. That's the, the, the basics, really. But to properly explain exactly what it does <laughs> And how it can benefit you as as a as a backer when you think of your customers. That's probably the main key the key point, really. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's almost obvious sounding, it but it's <laughs> but I bet it happens. But I bet it happens often to where you know a creator or someone putting a product out into the market, they're so close to it yeah. that they probably as, uh, assume someone else knows more about it than they actually do. Yeah. Uh, do you think that's true? I, I, like when they're writing out their copy and stuff? Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think that, you know, you could just do a quick search on, on Kickstarter, Indigo and all the other platforms and maybe find a similar product to yours already. And then you're sort of saying, Oh, they, they did something like this. And yeah, you need to sort of take a few steps back really. And, and, and analyze, you know, the benefits of it. I, I listened to one of the previous podcasts with uh, Roy from Aventis where he was saying, um, you know, it, 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 you actually need to provide something of value to people. And, and for me, I'll just take it an, a, another step further and make sure it's not a novelty type product because those things fade quite quickly. It has to be something that benefits someone. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's how I would approach it. Hmm. So how do you guys, cause I know that yeah. you offer the free tool, but then when you're working with clients, like how do you decide w who you want to work with? You know, is it kind of like you, you see a product and, and you can get behind it, something you'd actually want to use, something you'd get excited yeah. about? Like how do you sift out who you want to do work with? Um, I try to work with most people and I'm quite honest and approachable, I guess that's, that would be the word to use. Um, in that, yeah, I'll just give my feedback on it. Maybe they've got something uh, that that isn't ready now, but later it could be. But yeah, ideally, when you're working on a on a campaign, you should see that you know it worked for others in the past, which is a which is a great way that we approach this hands-on work. In that we look at the competitors and even see who they connect to. Even the even the words that your competitors use to to um, when they were doing their pitches, whether you look at their press release or something like that. And then you could say, oh, these guys race X amount and they were featured on this site. Oh, this writer wrote about them as well. Okay, let's approach them in a similar way. Um, but, how, but how we work on it, we need all these things ready. So we need the, you know, your the campaign page ready. We need all the press materials ready. And it all, it's all sort of connected really as well because, you know, you're telling a story within your press, press kit and then you're sort of taking it further and, and – using maybe those words on your campaign page as well. And then that's also connected to the pitches where you're sort of taking a few sentences and using that within the direct pitches as well. So yeah, it's all sort of connected in a way and also social media. It's a great way to connect with people instantly and then try and follow up with an email afterwards. Yeah. I was going to, that was going to be my next question actually is how, so how to like the best practices for people when they're doing their, you know, say they get their campaign knocked out and their page looks amazing. Yeah. What, what are the next steps after that? Like what, what, how do you get people to your page? How do you successfully, you know, tell the right story, maybe not directly on the campaign page, but using email and using social media, like what are some best practices to doing that? Well, I've been looking at guys, you know, I've been talking about competitors, but I also look at my competitors as well. So people who, you know, whether it's agencies, you know, looking at the guys like, you know, Command Partners funded today, and I see how, how they talk and how they approach campaigns. So they say, you know, look at friends, family and fools, and, and to look at within your own network and see if you can capture their emails or uh, maybe, um, you know, you, you don't know someone personally that could help you or back you or support you in a way. But maybe your friends, family, fools, they, they could help you in a, in a way. They might know someone. So it's a good way to look at who you're connected with already, get everyone in the team involved, and you could look at whether collecting emails and getting the word out that way. You know, Hopefully you can back me on day one or 
you know, even if you're not interested in our product, just donating a dollar would would help within uh, Kickstarter itself. Um, just things like that, and you're going on further and taking it further to maybe running a competition to collect emails and get the word out, or you know, doing mm-hmm. that, that type of thing. So, when you're working with uh, clients, what what differentiates uh, you guys from your competitors? Like, what makes you different um, at Hyperstarter than maybe what other people do? Uh, who do this similar kind of thing to help out crowdfunding campaigns and stuff like that. Like what makes you guys unique? Yeah, I think our unique approach is that we're really in touch with um, our customers and find out what they, what they need and what they want. Um, uh, and then going from there to, if you look at our competitors, even, you know, the, the other agencies that, you know, could be considered competitors to us, they, we find out their problems actually. And we found out that they turn away something like 90% of their customers, which I think mm. is huge. Um, and I think it, if, uh, you know, they, we find out that they're turning those guys away, that we can actually help uh, those campaign owners um, to to check their campaigns or work with us and develop. We're not just after the huge campaigns. We actually want to work on the majority, but there's certain ways to do it. And that's what we're involved in. Yeah, I think that's, that's huge, man. Because you're bound. What's crazy about that is you're bound to strike gold. You know, it's good for you and for the creators because, you know, maybe somewhere in that ninety percent, there's a hit waiting. You know, like a really big campaign that could really benefit you guys. But also, I mean, that's that's just a huge portion of people who could use some help to make their stuff stand out a yeah. little more. So that's definitely cool that you guys do that. Yeah. It's, it's the same approach when I work on campaigns. So we look at competitors, but if you also turn it around and look at our own competitors, say, I oh, realize they have a problem as well. And this is, and this is how we would approach it and using our tool and our hands on work. So yeah, this, that's an interesting uh, thing to, to mention. That's smart. Yeah. So uh, taking a step in a different direction a little bit. So you are yeah. um, running the company and looking at your guys' page. You have a few, a, a small staff working alongside you. Yeah, I do from China to the states to um, yeah, just all over the place, really. India. That's cool. Yeah. So, so just as an entrepreneur, I'm curious what what are some um, maybe of your greatest uh challenges but also the the most the best parts of having uh working with a team of people not just on your own i think uh, i've known these guys that i've worked with for years so yeah i'm just trying to imagine what it's like to get someone new on board because they sort of know how i work and i know how they work i I think the challenge is 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 that it's just sticking to it isn't it because we're all working at home we're home-based and it's finding the the challenge is actually concentration and, and sitting down. It's, it's so easy when you, you're based at home to, you know, look somewhere else or just go out for a few hours and come back and, and not concentrate on exactly <laughs> what you're doing. It's, it's really hard, actually, because that, that would be a, you know, if, if people are working from home, they, they'd realize that, that yeah, you, you do need to stick it out and change your scenery sometimes or work in a cafe which is what i was doing in in china as well i had a base it over there but i was going out just to try something new so yeah Mm -hmm. it it can be quite tough at times that's cool man that's cool i i always uh, admire when you can successfully get multiple people working together and you're not all in the same place i think that's a huge challenge but when you can do it it's awesome so i have two more questions for you and one of them um if you were talking to a new entrepreneur or a creator, someone who's wanting to launch something, what would you say is the most vital thing to think about when they're launching a crowdfunding campaign? Like what is the the big thing that they need to focus on when working on a crowdfunding campaign? Maybe besides the, the obvious, have a great product. Yeah, they have a great product and will it sell or, you know, it's, it's such a huge thing really that what, I don't know, maybe you could ask me another question I could come back to it because I'm not, I'm not actually sure how to answer that because it's, it's, it's quite an open question really. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> well, may, well, maybe, um, maybe instead of like one thing that's most important, maybe like you're getting started. Like how would you tell someone, okay, so you have this idea mm-hmm. and it's pretty good. Mm-hmm this is how you get started. Like this is where you should start from. You should start maybe like researching. You know, of course you, you research. And, that, and that's what I mentioned before about looking what others have done. 
And if you can follow with their path, yeah. you see you've, you've got a product and you type it in on, say, Kickstarter and realize that none of those guys have been successful in, in what they've done. They, none of them have reached their goal. And you're thinking, well, you know, I'm, I'm creating something similar and you know, there's no traction, there's no, there's no interest. What can I do? It's not that you haven't got a great product. It's maybe those guys marketed it in a, in a different way or something like this. Um, I was actually part of um, Entrepreneurial Spark within uh, Bristol. They've got all different types of branches uh, all over the UK. And it's great because you see different entrepreneurs at different stages. And I was in you know, the, the upper stage and I see the, the guys with, you know, someone's got a social media agency or someone's got this, um, you know, uh, what, they, what they do, running type product. And, you know, we're all together and we're talking to each other about the challenges, but we're all sort of facing the same sort of issues, which is, you know, making mm. sales. And, uh, yeah, that's the most important thing. And, and I guess as an entrepreneur, you need to be like a salesperson. You need to just get get your message out there and get the word out and just constantly be promoting yourself. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm lucky in that Hyperstarter gets a lot of its traffic from word of mouth or recommendations and, and all natural type things I've, i haven't done any you know paid ads or or you know proper promotion in, in that sort of way so it's going well and i do need to do that because that's the advice i give to others but uh yeah it's it's, it's going well for us and yeah so that's that's what i would take out of it yeah well you guys offer such a great free resource yeah. i think that and that in itself is huge in getting people interested in what yeah. you're doing so Giles, where can people connect with you and what you're doing? Where would you want people to go go find you online? Yeah, go to um, hyperstarter.com. Uh, check us out, see what we're doing. Um, and then, yeah, feel free to get in touch. We reply to every email. Cool, man. Cool. Well, Giles, thank you so much for being on. Um, I seriously like so much of what you said was so helpful and so awesome. Yeah. And uh, I look forward to uh, talking again in the future. Um, and I look forward to seeing what Hyperstarter does next. So thank you so much for being on the show, man. All right. Thanks, Alex. That was my interview with Giles Daw. So please make sure to go check out Hyperstarter and get in touch with them if you're looking for help in making your next crowdfunding campaign a major hit. Thanks for being on, Giles. This podcast is made by Gadgetflow, and we're proud to be the number one platform to find new and awesome gadgets. So please make sure to check out our site all the time. Just keep heading over there and checking out all the new and amazing products we're curating every single day. We'll be back next week with another episode. So in the meantime, please go rate and review our show on iTunes. Thank you so much for listening to the Gadget Flow podcast.